own understanding but in all of my ways I'm going to acknowledge you because you shall direct my path yay God on tonight we pray that you would direct our paths in the name of Jesus you will crucify our flesh right to the inside you will crucify Oh, 
Ghost. Father, we need power on tonight. We need power from the Holy Ghost. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Those that need to be filled with the Holy Ghost power. Yes, sir, on tonight. They will be filled with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gives them mutterance. Father, put a quickening in their spirit that they will want to receive the power from on high. Let them get it, God. Let them receive it, God. They need the power. They got to have the power. They got to have the power from on high. And that is to remind the Holy Ghost. Father, put a desire in them. Put that taste in them, God. How many I see? Do it right now, God. Let that hunger and that thirst rise up in them, God. That they will want more of you. They will want more of the attributes. How many I see? How many I show? The imitators of God. Father, let us imitate after you. Let us imitate your way. Let us imitate your walk. Let us imitate your talk. Let us imitate your ways. Because it's all about you and not about us. Under the most side. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that this church, you would transform it into a hospital for the sick. You would transform it. I'm gonna my son, I'm gonna my You would transform it right now for a restaurant. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, He is good. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that this, this will be a change agent station. That you would develop agents for the kingdom of God. Oh, God, on tonight. It's not about us. It's not about our agenda. It's all about you tonight. Come and move on us. Come and sit on us. Shift your way in this place. We're hungry for you, God. We're thirsty for you, God. And none of this world can quench our thirst. None of this world can satisfy us. None of this world does us any good. But Father, all tonight, we're going to continue to trust in you. We're going to continue to rely in you. We're going to continue to love on you. Father, I pray that you will elevate our thinking. You will elevate our power. You will elevate our study. Study to show thyself from proof unto God. A word that they need to not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Father, let us get into your word. Let that hunger and thirst after you, God. That we will go out in the highways and the hedges and compel man to come forth. We will tell a dying world that for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of you is eternal life. We will tell a dying world that God said not a servant to the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. We will tell a dying world as for me and my house we will serve the Lord. Yes God. We will tell a dying world that Jesus is the way the truth and the life. Come on somebody. Oh, my God.
Give me 
let the praise stop because he gave up the mic. Come on, give him glory. I said, come on, clap your hands and give him glory. Come on, get down into this court at the millennial eruption and we're in expectation for God to do something great. I said, we're in expectation. Y'all ain't talking tonight. We're in expectation for God to do something great. Hallelujah. Lord, I just want to thank you.
Everybody can praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, right. everybody ought to praise the Lord. Let's give it out the way. Listen, stand to your feet real quickly. Let's just let's just honor God. Hallelujah. Be back in the house of prayer just one more time. Oh God, come on, Lord, we're calling on you all right now, oh God. Come 
come and deliver on tonight, oh God. Heal the broken heart, oh God. Calm the, calm the contemplative spirit, oh God. In your first name that we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands and give God a great praise? Come on, I said, can we clap our hands and give God a great praise? Come on, wait on you. Can we give God a great praise in the building? We didn't show you for no other reason but to give his name the praise. One more time, can we give God a great praise in the building? Why he even have the praises of his people? One more time, can you give God a great praise in the building? He didn't wake you up on purpose this morning. Can you give God a great praise in the building? But no music, no music, no music. Can we open our mouths and give God a great praise? Come on, come on, open your mouth. Give him a praise. Come on, open your mouth and give it to him. Now, with everything that we have, we can musician everything.
is a good God. Anybody know that he is a good God? God, we give you praise for everything that you do for us. Now, one little thing goes unnoticed. But today we start to give you praise for everything that you do. One thing that I usually say, how can God bless us with bigger things when we're not appreciative of the smaller things? If we're not appreciative of a penny, how can, we, how can he bless us with a dollar? But we have to give him praise for the small things. That's, that seems like the thing that we overlook the most, the small things. We give him praise for the houses, the cars, but do we give him praise for life of the strength? Do we give him praise for the people wave my hands right now? Do we give him praise for people move out of city right now?
so Adonai, you're worthy. Adonai, you're righteous. Thank you for being healer. Thank you for being provider. Thank you for being way maker. Thank you for being Adonai. Thank you for being El Shaddai. Thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. Thank you for being Jehovah Methodist. Thank you for being Jehovah Christian. Thank you for being Jehovah Nisi. Thank you for being Jehovah Rafika. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Let something ring out your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Jesus, you're my everything, you're my everything, you're my everything, you're my everything, you're my everything,
been in heaven since I'm here. Since I made it this far, since I, since I made it this far, I just want to stop for a station and I give the patient to let the devil know I ain't lost my place. I lost some money, I lost some friends, and that was I lost some stuff. I even lost a house and a car one time, but that's what I lost my place. You can't let go of that. You can't let me lose my place. I said you can't let me lose my place.
feels good in here now. It feels good. I feel the temperature change. Yeah, I feel it. Like we had to get that off me. Hallelujah. Thank God for the man of God leading us in the praise and worship. We had to, we had to get up that off me. I'm from the country. We had to get it up off me. Yeah, you got to do your work. I understand. I understand. You check your show. I understand. I understand. You just had to get that up off me. And the scripture said, for the spirit of heaviness, he'll give you a garment of praise. And then after you get that off you, you got to put on your praise. You got you to gotta wear it. It's a coat. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to make sure that when God shows up, we know how to respond to him. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my pastor teaches us, hey, don't need to invite him if you don't want him here. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, well, you might as well just go and heist up your windows and open up your doors. Huh? Yes, yes. Uh, you might as well let him come on in. Yeah? Yes, yes. I said you might as well heist up your windows and open up your door. That's all. That's all. You, you, you ain't got to do a lot. Just... Open up your heart, open up your mind, let them all shine, let them change the stomach heart, give your heart of flesh, let them change the language tonight, that's what you need to do, you got too much, you need to put that on a hook, you need to change the tongue, the tongue is made of all flesh, let them change the language tonight, that's what you need to do, let them change the language tonight, that's what you need to do, let them change the language tonight,
to feel Holy Ghost. I, do. I feel like I, I don't feel flesh on parade tonight. I feel Holy Ghost. I, like like these young people on this road on this second row right here. Like I, I, I sense Holy Ghost on the road. I really do. I don't even know what y'all praise for or what y'all standing in, you know. But I sense Holy Ghost on the whole second row. I just do. No 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 no. I didn't I, I didn't come to you know, prophesy, but I sense Holy Ghost. I do. I sense. I said, I'm going to shout. All right. Okay. All right. I said, Holy Ghost. I do. Bishop T.L.D. Witt and the totally awesome Miss Deonie D. Witt. 
We want to welcome you to the new millennial eruption. Hashtag Stop the Cap. Say it with me. Stop the Cap. We welcome you. We welcome everybody. We welcome you once. We welcome you twice. Come to Balco. We love you like no other by the other. And like we say, where I come to Balco, it's the place to be. You gotta be there to know it. But everybody wanna see. We dance well, but we don't give well. I knew it would get quiet there. I knew it. I knew it would. But whenever you're maturing God, giving in the church, if you can give $200 to your weed, and you can go and wait six hours for a $200 pair of Jordans to drop that you won't wear every day, you can also sow into the house of God. I think we have our priorities mixed up, Bishop, that we would rather invest into things that are temporal instead of things that are eternal. And tonight, we want to be intentional about our giving tonight. Someone say amen. Right? I'll be given specific instruction. Apparently, there is a goal that there needs to be met, and I want to make sure that we meet that in this offering. Say amen. Amen. All right, so I know I have some people in here who are singers and who are preachers and the like. I was raised and I was taught by my grandfather, if you're going to wear a title, make sure that you can pay on the level of the title that you wear. Evangelist, you know, sometimes I go to services and a bishop or a pastor will stand and say, I want all my bishops and apostles and pastors to stand with $200. Right? right? That's what they say, right? And it's amazing to me that you have a lot of people who are apostles and bishops who would draw up. Draw up and then don't have it to give. Then I actually question whether you were called to that office or not. But tonight, I do want us tonight, I want 20 people tonight, 20 people, somebody say 20 people, to stand with me and the young people of Malcolm with the $25 gift. That was what I was instructed to do. And that's what we're going to do quickly. Let's stand quickly. For those who are going to give that $25, let me know. Y'all know how I do this. Let me know how we're doing this tonight. Thank you. One, two, three. Can I do it? How I do it? All right. All right. If you're staying with a $25 seat, who's standing with me tonight with $25? All right. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. We have 26, 27. We have overflow. So somebody shout overflow. Now listen, now, now, when we're giving this tonight, don't want everybody else staying because I know how church folk can do, Jacobs. When everybody's staying, they say they're going to give 25 and then they go in and cash out 10. Don't come to church and lie in the Holy Ghost. And some people just stand. Some people just stand, literally. Some people just stand so that they can look the part. Y'all ain't talking loud. Now, if I was talking about haters, y'all would be screaming. Glory to God. So, I want everybody else who does not have 20, the cash app. All right, you the cash app is beginning a new life, C O M. Beginning a new life, C O M. All right, dollar sign, beginning a new life, C O M. 
Do we have that? If you don't have twenty-five, I want you to stand with the closest thing that you have to twenty-five dollars. Let's stand. Everybody tonight should be giving something, especially my entrepreneurs. Glory to God. Everybody should be giving something on behalf of Kenny's knots and accessories. We'll be giving a hundred dollars tonight in the first offering. Me and my wife will be giving twenty-five a piece. Say amen. amen. Listen, I want you to stand with something in your hand. Everybody stand all over this room. All over this room. And let's stand with the gift. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the gift and the giver. I thank you for those who are intentional with their giving tonight. I pray, God, that this seed will be fruitful and multiply. And I pray, God, that you would bless the heart and the intentions of every giver tonight. We thank you for the increase overflow more than enough. In Jesus' name, someone shout amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be governed by those that's in. All right. The young man here, he's going to lead you in this giving tonight. Someone say, shout hallelujah.
So I don't get sad after offering. I kind of get excited after the offering. Because I know that any day now, So there's been such a, a negative connotation sometimes with offering y'all because y'all think the people think all the church wants your money. No, but we, we really don't want your money. We want your heart and your soul. And that's what we're after. Um, so, and so there's such a negative, negative connotation to offering giving that people shut down or we make it like the, the slow part or the low part of the service. And so I'm always encouraged that after the offering, you know, there, there, ought to, there ought to be some type of shout, some type of praise. There ought to be some anticipation. I'm not trying to get you dance. I'm just trying to help. I'm trying to help your mind come into the place where God would have you be. I grew up in a small town outside of Charleston called Guadalajara Island. And my uncles had farms. And when they would plant their seeds, they would go back in the house and they would be they would feel uh, they would feel fulfilled for the day because they knew that they had harvest coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they knew a harvest was coming. Yeah. And so I just need ten people because I, I really like I really feel like I feel something elder. I don't know what I don't know what you're gonna preach, but I feel I feel something like in the atmosphere, like a like a shift. I don't know what you've been praying about. I really don't. Know. I don't know. I don't know what you what you've been praying about for ministry, but, but I feel God shifting your finances in the church. I don't know what you've been about. I feel God shifting finances, and so um, I just need ten people. I, like I really feel like I feel sometimes, and I'm not talking about a stimulus check or tax return, but I feel I feel God. I feel God sending increase.
believe your word. And I trust you that you're going to make good on your promise. Clap your hands and give them praise. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give them praise. You can have this seat if you can. You can have this seat if you can. Supreme in this place. Use us for your glory. 
Let someone get their answer today. Let someone's life be changed today. Let someone cry out, what must I do to be transformed, to be saved, even to be reclaimed? We thank you now for your spirit that we feel. In this short space, Lord God, we ask again that you manifest your presence. And we will be intentional about giving you the praise and glory that you're worthy of. In Jesus' name, I want everyone in this room who agree with that prayer to clap your hands and shout amen. 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 Please stay standing just for a moment. I am honored to be here tonight. Um, this is the second year that I've been considered to share in this wonderful gathering of young people. And there is no way that we could be here without the leaders allowing us together for the young people to express themselves. But I believe the heart of the leader is for the glory of God to meet their young people in a supernatural way. I believe in a time, Elder Hardage, where leaders are manipulative and everybody has a title but no anointing. That I'm standing in a house of trusted vessels. I didn't hear Malcolm say anything. I believe I'm standing in a house of trusted vessels. I promise you I won't be long tonight, Booger. I, I, I promise you I won't. The, the hurricane is coming tomorrow. I'm just a little putt putt to prepare the way. Of who's coming after me. But understand this, young people, everybody, that it's hard to find authentic leaders who care more about your soul than your pocketbook. It's hard, Prophet, to find leaders that will lay hands on you and not cover you up, but cover you in the spirit until you get your act together. I want us tonight, and I love these people yeah. so very much. I really do. I watch from a distance, and I honor the gifts that they are to the body of Christ. Do me a favor, and I want you to praise God, just like the President of the United States walked in. Let's give God praise for Bishop and Overseer. Yeah. Oh, make a noise. your life. Listen, I have some friends who came along tonight. I don't have to, time to call everyone because I'm ready to share what God has given. But if you are a minister of the fivefold, please wave your hand and let's give God praise for God. Come on, let's give God praise for them. Minister Destin Prentice, we skipped you earlier. We thank God for you, the founder of Save the Nation. Thank God for you. I want you to look at somebody beside you and say neighbor. Y'all ain't talking loud. Say neighbor. I can't tell you all the details. But just know that God has been good to me. Find somebody on the other side and say, neighbor, it's none of your business. What he brought me out of. I want you to help me praise him. That I just came out. I just want to praise him that he brought me out. Some of y'all in here are acting real bougie now. And you and you are forgetting to remember what God did in secret. And if the world knew your mess, you would be discredited, a cast away, thrown away, done away with, wouldn't be able to recover. But I thank him for his grace and his mercy. Y'all ain't saying much to me. Maybe 
you haven't been through anything, let me talk to some of the older people. I thank God that He covered me until I recovered. Y'all ain't saying much to me. I want everybody in this room who's grateful God covered you to shout glory all over this room. that the enemy was out on an assignment for me this week. My God. Those who understand the symptoms of a heart attack, yeah. you understand that there's a sharp pain sharp. that will start from this side of your chest yes. and shoot down to your wrists. Yes. I've been having that pain for three days consecutively. And the devil tried to whisper in my ear that I'm going to take you out before your time. The devil began to play mind games, Booger, and said, yeah, you're going to die from a heart attack. And everything that's locked up in you won't be released. And even on the way here, as I was driving here, and, um, and I was driving, I felt pain just shooting down my wrist. And fear tried to grip my spirit. And see, some of us who are younger, we don't understand because we feel like we can't get sick until we get 60 or 50 or 75. But I know someone over here who's 20 years old who already had a stroke. So you better be able to praise him that God, by that enemy couldn't touch you because God had you covered. Y'all ain't saying sure nothing to me. And so... Elder Benjamin, I'm sorry, I was ready to call you Ben, but Elder Ben, I was getting ready to, and I came in here and I walked in here and the pain got worse. And the reason I know God is going to answer some prayers tonight is because once I got in here and got in the praise, the pain relinquished itself because they had to back up because the anointing was present. And I want everybody in here who can praise him that God has given him to do something great. I want you to praise him like you got victory in your hand right now. Go ahead. respond well to things that matter. I said, I got a feeling that someone will be filled tonight. No music, I'm good. Because we're good. I'll call you in a minute, Denzel. See, what happens is we get music dependent. And then when God wants to really say something, we think we need the music in order for God to speak. But I want you to pass it down your road and say, neighbor, neighbor. I didn't have a ham and organ when I almost lost my life. I didn't have a, a drum set when I was dancing at home trying to keep from crying. But all I had was a praise on the inside. I have the real Holy Ghost. 
already preaching. I got the Holy Ghost that knows how to keep my flesh up under subjection. Yeah, this is going to be rough tonight. <laughs> it's going to be rough. It's all right. But I said, I got the Holy Ghost that can keep my flesh up under subjection. God is going to get another yes out of us tonight. I said, tell somebody you want to get another yes out of you. Hallelujah to God. Let's do this. Yes, to myself. God, I glorify you. All right. See how some of y'all look like zombies now because there's no sea shark? The old church, the old church would literally have the musicians praying while it was time to pray. And now you have the musicians who will play, but they won't talk. No shame, because Denzel and Tajo, they travel with me extensively. They slow and they respond. So that was no shade. I don't know shade. Shades for trees. But when? Oh, I feel Holy Ghost. In Acts, they were in one place. One accord, and then suddenly. See, here's the issue. We got everybody in church who on different pages, and then you're trying to get glory to come in the room. I want everybody in this room, if you got two hands for 30 seconds, begin to give God glory with no music and give him praise just because you can do it. Open your mouth. Spirits open. There's an impartation that God wants to mama you to the Kisia. Glory to God. There's an impartation. Somebody shout impartation that God wants to give us tonight. We're not just going to dance, we're going to get delivered. Glory to God. I praise you. Now I see why he was trying to attack me. Hallelujah. Somebody gonna get delivered tonight. Glory to God. I praise you. Listen, if you're scared, you might as well go ahead and leave now. We don't want your money. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. We want miracle signs and wonders. Hallelujah. We want the manifestation of God. I'm good. For God's glory to be revealed in the midst of us tonight. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'm not preaching for show. I don't preach just because it's an opportunity. Time out for opportunists in the pulpit. Hallelujah. If you can't pull me out of the pit, get out the pulpit. Y'all ain't, ain't talking loud in here. Thank you. I told Denzel he's calling you back the way you belong, son. Yeah. Thank you. Glory to God. I praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. I'm going to preach. Some of y'all are waiting for the next thing and you want something to be mechanical. You're so religious that God can't bring deliverance. I got preachers here that got power. They got me. We'll be all right. I sure. Hallelujah. See how some of y'all looking? See how some of y'all looking now? We ain't doing three, four, five and one, one, one. Now we can tell what you really have. Look. Thank you. Maybe you'll enjoy hustling a little better, but tonight I come to plow the ground. Oh, gee. All right, I gotta preach. Hey! Break up the fire ground tonight. Devil, you will not. Ow! The devil can dance too. Ow! He was a praiser. He was the chief praiser. He can dance too, but he can't get 
delivered. He can't get set free. I think this might be my last year. I don't know. All right. He's going to set you free tonight. I'm in a different place. There's a breaking in the spirit tonight. Holy Ghost, move amongst your people. Yay! Y'all all right? I know I got Jacobs. So we'll be all right. Yeah! I got the car and the Lexus in my life. You'll be all right. Shut time. I got profit over here. I'm fine. Even in this moment, God is breaking some things. If you just open up your mouth and lift your hands, I promise you, you'll find the answer in all Jesus. You'll find your deliverance there. I know some of y'all bored. We're going to 
love you more than life itself. Thank you. John's Gospel. John's Gospel, chapter 4. your devices. There is a cry in my spirit tonight. Yay! There's a cry in my belly. You, sir, you know we grew up together. I've never, we've never been more serious about God and ministry than we've been now. Now I see why the older generation has questions. I always, I always, I always was on the defense of my generation. But now I can look at my generation and I say, but we do have potential. But we don't have discipline for power. We know more. Have access to more. But we don't have more. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, all right. Pastor, as long as I'm okay with you guys, I'm all right. John's Gospel, chapter 4. If you're ready for the word of the God, I want you to shout, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. John's Gospel, chapter 4. Glory to God, I praise you forevermore. Yes, sir. Are you ready for the word of God? Are you yes. ready? Yes. All right. Are you guys ready for the word of God? Over yes. Yes. John, I feel the anointing. I'm trying to get through this. chapter 4 verse 44 through 53 I want you to stay right where you are I know I have some mature saints here I want you to stay in the spirit God going to destroy some yokes tonight <clears throat> my Bible's going to read a bit different but it's still the word of the Lord I'm reading from the NSEB If you have it, don't say I have it. Shout, I have it. I have it. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor, no honor. in his own country. Okay. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did in Jerusalem at the feast. For they themselves also went to the feast. All right. Here's what we want to preach from. Therefore, he came to Cana of Galilee where he had made the water wine. There was a royal official. Your Bible says nobleman. But a royal official whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and was imploring him to come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. 
So Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. The royal official said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. I feel the temperature in the room rising. The royal official said to him, sir, come down. Your Bible says ear, but come down before my child dies. Jesus says to him, go, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went his way. This is where I get excited. As he was now going down, Elder Hardage, his slaves met him and saying that his son was living. So he inquired of them the hour when he began to get better. And for those who will praise him, they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew. Thank you, Moshe, to the Bokoriyamas. The father Bokoriyamas, Kasiya the Bokor. Kadamaoshia. The father knew it was at that hour, and when Jesus said to him, "Your son lives," and he himself believed, and his whole household. I'm go that's it. I'm going to extract my title from this. So he inquired of them the hour 52 when he began to get better. Overseer, you can preach this better than I can. They said to him yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. I want you to do me a favor to look at someone near you and I want you to literally tell them what the topic is. Look at them and say neighbor. Y'all ain't talking loud enough. I promise you I need praises on this one. Say neighbor. neighbor. Oh neighbor. Oh, no cap. No cap. He did it yesterday. He did it yesterday. Find somebody around you and say, no cap. No cap. Colin. He did it yesterday. Be seated in Jesus' name. Be seated. This is for the mature. Before I indulge into my text tonight, and I heard Pastor Johnny Brown says this, and I, he said, an open mouth is a signification of an open heart. And if your mouth is closed, it lets me know that your heart shuns what God is saying tonight. I just need my preachers to indulge me for about 15 minutes and we'll be all right. I am a little worried about our generation this day. Not that I don't believe in them. Because I am a part of it. But I'm worried about how we have lost, for those who are starting to scream at me, we've lost our pursuit after God. We love the things that come along with the church. But we disassociate the church from who God really is. We have a lack of longing for God. We literally, for those who will talk to me, do not desire to deny ourselves. Our flesh is louder all the time than our spirit. But in order for you to walk in the spirit, you have to have the spirit and yield to the voice of God. Now I understand 
understand that I am not the best orator in the world, but I come to set you free tonight because you got a lot of people now who cannot uh, detect what's oil and what's gift. And the only reason and the only way that we get so, I'm good, I'm good where I was. The only way that we get so distracted nowadays is because we like to put them together. And here it is, we have a person, now listen, I don't, I don't care what the world say, there is no way that you can have an anointing working in you if you don't have the anointed one. And you can't be doing and living in sin and have the anointed one. Now, see, I just cursed to, with some of y'all because we don't like to preach about sin no more. We don't like to preach about sanctification anymore. We don't like to preach about righteousness and holiness no more. Because, you know, holiness now has become a cliche. Because now we say, everybody want to say holiness is still right. And we go up and be the ones who make the loudest noise who really have not taken it to heart. And I come to tell you that righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to any people. And the only way that you are really going to be effective in the body of Christ and in this world system, you got to have a power on the inside of you. Now, I lost half the church because I'm preaching simplistic gospel tonight. But I want somebody in this room who got power with God to praise him because you know you got power. Can you pray? Yeah, so now we don't like to crucify our flesh. We have lost our pursuit. We've lost our yes, Lord. We have entertained church antics. Glory to God. We like to go to church. We like to dance because we know we can't go to the club, so we'll go to church instead. All right, Lord, I preach. So we can't go watch nobody strip and get naked. So because if we go to the strip club, somebody might spot us. Y'all ain't want to help. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm losing my church. Yeah, we can't go to the ABC store because everybody in church know my car. Y'all ain't want to help me preaching here. But let me tell you, understand. Let me help you understand, people of God. The only way that you're going to operate in the anointing of God in this day is that you got to keep your temple clean. You got to disassociate. I ain't got no help in back up the now. You got to disassociate yourself from everything. Those leeches that would drain you of your spiritual tenacity that would drain you from out of anything that will be a distraction. You got to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Which is, here it is, the reasonable service. Y'all didn't want to help me. God said, this is what's required of you. It's the bottom line. It's supposed to be automatic. But now we find ourselves, now we find ourselves, and we have become more attracted to overseer. You can stop me when I get out of line, but we get more attracted to those who sound good, but who aren't good. Y'all didn't want to help me. We get, we get excited about people who can run the scale. Hallelujah. But they're sleeping with every woman in the church. Y'all didn't want to help me preach it here. We got those people who know how to holler. God Almighty. Know how to holler and scream, but they'll come preach at your church and leave your church and be in your people's inboxes. Y'all ain't want to help me preach. And I'm a little worried now because God has given me a little bit of exposure and I see people in my generation and we go crazy over their ability. We go we go crazy over their knowledge. We, we go, now nah, I'm not fighting knowledge. I'm not fighting uh, education because it's needed. If you need to go to school and know how to properly execute the text, do it. Whatever you're going to do. I, I'm not fighting that. I'm not one of them old preachers who say, you don't need no teaching. No, no you need to be educated. I get it. But I'm telling you right now, you got educated demons in the pulpit trying to manipulate you. <laughs> okay, manipulate. Trying to manipulate you. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying. And we shout and they going crazy and walk in the pews laying hands on you. And now you're wondering why you're struggling with the same spirit. It's because demons transfer, man. Oh, but I'm a little vexed, Pastor. I'm bothered. I'm bothered. Here it is because uh, I know preachers now. God, I know preachers now. And, I, and this is no shade. I don't call names and I don't go chasing. Y'all need to stay out of people's business anyway. But I know I know some preachers now. I know preachers now who, who can preach me up under a bench. I mean, know everything about the Word of God and will manipulate Scripture to get a 
response out of you emotionally. I know some people who so witty. Y'all ain't want to help me preach. So creative to the point where you will think it's the word of God when it's really philosophy. When it's really man-made doctrines. And they will make you believe that it's God because they move one word in the text can flip the whole text. And what they would do is add and take away. But I heard the Bible say, if any man take away or add to this, they His heart is, I'm, I'm a little worried now because, uh, yeah, 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 anyway, I, I'll do whatever. But I'm a little worried now because oftentimes we have people who know how to preach well, they, they know how to sing well, they learn church book, they, they know when to say hallelujah, they know when to say whatever it is to get you to emotionally remove. But I got a bow, oh God, I got a bone to pick because uh, they got a whole lot of emotional individuals in church uh, who knows how to. In, but they're on the way to hell. Y'all ain't want to help me. See, I knew I would lose the church. I knew it. Let me go ahead and preach to the season. Because here it is. I'm not here tonight to beat you up. Because I was once where you are. Y'all ain't want to help me preach it here. I knew what it was. To be 17, 18, 19, and 20 with a calling on my life. But then my flesh was out of control. I know. I know what it was. To have that Pressure. You're trying to figure out whether to be saved or sexy. Y'all ain't want to help me. You're trying to figure out whether to be. Y'all ain't want to help me preaching. I'm trying to be on your side tonight. I know what it is. I know what it is. Do you really want to go into and see what the club is all really about? I know. I know what it is that now it seemed like nobody really wanted you at one time and then everybody wants you so you gave it up to everybody who wanted I got it. I know what it is. If there's ever been a time to live holy, the time is now. And I'm a little worried about people who are maniacs with microphones. I'm a little worried about people. God told me to know. I know I'm going to lose the church and I know you ain't going to sell. But it's all right. We come to do God. Judgment work tonight. I know what it is. I know what it is. And so I watch these preachers. And they'll preach to you. And the next day you will see them at a bar. Turn it up. I know what it is. Y'all want to help me. But I still believe that it's necessary to be holy behind closed doors. Y'all ain't want to help me preach it here. Yeah. And the only sin is not homosexuality. And the only sin is not cheating. Some of us lie on our taxes. Yeah, you just as guilty as well. Glory to God, I praise you. Some of y'all owe God. Some of y'all got pride in your heart. You're guilty as well. Some of y'all eat too much. You're guilty as well. God Almighty. You know you ain't hungry. But you like to eat. Apples and bananas. Burgers and fries. Y'all better leave me alone tonight. Y'all don't talk about every sin. Gluttony is still a sin, you know. God Almighty. And for those who are holler at your boy, I'm tired of these self-righteous saints who will literally point the finger at your skeleton when they got a whole cemetery in there. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried now, Pastor. God Almighty, I praise you. I'm a little worried now, oh, excuse me, Elder Hardage, because now we have some people who are really okay with being where they are. is pushing me. They are okay. Oh, cussing and speaking in tongues. They okay. Let me preach to this cap here. Because some of them think I'm capping, but I'm not. God, I'm out of God. Yeah, Katie, let me talk to you. They're okay with going to the club. Dancing, oh, dropping it like it's hot. Twerking and tweaking. But want to dance in church. They feel no remorse. They feel no conviction. But can I help those who will hear me? When you've lost your conviction, you've lost your connection. God, I praise you. But do I have anybody in here who would get excited with me? That when I did do the wrong thing, there was something telling me I did wrong. When I went the wrong place, at least I had somebody. Say, now what 
are you doing? What are you doing? Get up. Ha, leave. You know that was wrong. Ha, do I have anybody here who can praise God? Ha, that even God allowed conviction to grip you when you were doing what you were doing. But you got some people. I'm all right. I know it ain't how, you know. I got some people who really have now mastered doing sin secretly to the point where they know how to church real good. Oh, God. Anyway, I come to break it up. I promise you, Hudson, they give me the revelation tomorrow. But I come tonight to tell you that part I'm verse. But I come to tell you that there is a remnant that God is raising up that we got to be holy at any cost because how in the world how in the hand of Jesus is the sinner going to come to you when you're doing what they do how are they going to come to you for prayer and you just as guilty as they are can I tell somebody in here that it's time to give your life over to God hallelujah to God And even when I mess up, I'm grateful that he died for that. Even when I fail him, I'm grateful that his blood don't have a respect the person. He can save the drunk and he can save the homosexual. He can save the cheater and he can save the liar. Tell somebody, I'm so glad he saved me. It is. I promise you. I'm gonna get to my text now. But I want to talk to somebody in here who says, you know, I mean heaven all the way. God, I miss somebody. And if I have told you, you won't get a house in the car. I wouldn't be able to sit you down. But do I have anybody in here in my last 15 minutes who can say, I mean heaven all the way? I don't care what the devil is doing because we like to be so deep that we miss the simplistic things of the gospel. You got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. God Almighty. I can dance with you all night, but where is your power? I can scream with you all night, but do you have power to say no? When your mind is telling you no, but your body is telling you yes. Do you have enough power to override what the body is trying to do? That's why you got to present it. Y'all ain't want to help me preach. But do I have anybody who can praise him? I should have been dead by now. He should have cut me off in the act. But I'm grateful an angel. I wish I had screamers here. I wish I had an angel. I'm so glad I had an angel that literally walked with me to the club. And when the shooting went off, the angel covered me. When I went and got in the bed with some on the 
inside of you. You had a generation anointing. Your mama them had to get saved by you. Your daddy them had to be touched by you. You want to know why you're still alive? It's not because you got a degree. It's not because you can dress well. It's not because you got connections. But God had put a treasure in earthen vessels. I wish I had somebody who would help me holler in here. Thank you for the treasure. I know why I'm alive now. DK, I know why I deserve to die. But he said not guilty. I know why now. Because there was somebody who needed me to lay hands on them and to be healed. Y'all ain't talking in here now. I know why my son couldn't die. I know why I had to live. There was a generation that's coming out. Coming out of me. Maybe because of my preaching and fleshly gospel. That now we're not responding. Now here it is, prophet. If we was talking about haters, and if we were talking about people who don't like us, I would not be able to quiet it down. But see, the old preacher who preached the word, they didn't want to make you emotional. They wanted to make you spiritual. God. Because listen, some of y'all, I heard Bishop Blue say this. Y'all preaching about haters. And people don't even know who you are. Y'all, they want to help me preach it here. They don't like me. I can't get with them. Baby, mind your business. Seek the face of God. And go after and be what God called you to be. And don't just win to prove to them that you're not a loser. You need to win. You are destined to win. You are. All right. This ain't going too well. This ain't going too well. God, help me to get through this. You gave me this, so I'm going to do it. Here it is, overseer. I feel the Holy Ghost. I promise you this story. I promise you to break in a moment. But, oh, God, I want you to understand now that we have developed an appetite for poison. We've developed an appetite for those things that does not bring our spirit nutrients. We've developed an appetite for sweet things that will literally give you cavities after a while. So if they're preaching about certain things, then we good. But don't deal with my idiosyncrasy. Don't deal with my flaw. Don't let me see myself. But you know when you're really mature for those who holler at me. You know when you're really mature. When you can dance with overseer or bishop. It's preaching about your issue. And you lift your hands. And not look at your neighbor. But you lift your hands. And say God it's not my brother. It's not my sister. It's not my cousin. It's not my enemy. But it's me God. Standing in the need of prayer. Do I have anybody here who will be real with yourself? That you are not where you need to be. But I can praise him tonight. That he didn't throw me away while I was trying to get better. He didn't throw me away while I was trying. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. What is your appetite like? Do you like gossip? Or do you like glory? Because you can't carry the glory if you carry gossip. God, I thank you for the word. You can't carry glory if you're talking about everybody. Lolly, Dolly, and everybody. Who slept with who? Who talked about who? Who did what? The latest scandal. Y'all didn't want to help me preach in here. And see, some of us in here, as I get ready to close my mouth, some of us in here don't have no room to talk about everybody else's public scandal. Because if God was to pull back the covers on your private stuff right now, you wouldn't be able to stay. Y'all didn't want to help me. I need about 200 people who can praise God that he covered me until I recovered. You can't tell I failed because the blood covered me. You can't tell I fell short because the blood covered me. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Come on, buddy. And see, some of us, I'll call you in a moment. Some of us are choosing, are picky and choosing how God blesses us. Come on, buddy. But for those who are praising, go ahead and turn it off and get on the keyboard, DJ. For those who don't need no distraction, for those who are praising, see, some of us are not grateful enough. We ain't grateful enough because we take the presence of God for granted. We take the loyalty of God for granted. Thank you, overseer, for sticking with me. I promise you to get better in a moment. I'll get to my text. I got five minutes of working and I'm going to go ahead and go home. But we take the presence of God for granted. But can I tell you who it was really when you were by yourself getting ready to commit suicide? It was the presence of God. Y'all ain't want to help me preach it here. When you was getting ready to make that choice that would have jacked up your whole life and what kept you from doing that, it was the presence of God. And see, some of us have a preference on how God's presence is manifested. God have mercy. But let me help you understand tonight. You don't have a preference when it comes to his presence. You don't have a choice in how God manifested himself. You don't have a choice in how God shows up. What if the man in John chapter 9 had a choice in how God was going to heal his sight? If he knew God was going to spit on the ground and make mud and then put it on his eyes, he would have then probably rejected it. But do I have who can praise him tonight? And he blinded me from how he was gonna bring me out. I didn't know how it was gonna come out. There was some snakes all around me, but I was walking blind. I promise you I'll get to my text because some of y'all bored. I promise you come back for us and he'll do better. I'm giving it in close. Tell somebody say no cap. He did it yesterday. But I'm telling you now. I promise you to make sense to you in a minute. I'm talking about a pursuit for God. Because now you're dealing with a man who has a desperate situation. And he has a pursuit for God. Yes. If some of y'all ain't desperate enough. It takes some of y'all to really encounter some major problems in order for you to go after God. But do I have anybody who's so committed to God that you can say, God, when I'm in pain, it's still yes, Lord. God, when I have money in my pocket, I'll still say yes. And even when I don't, I'll still say yes. Tell somebody say, I got a pursuit. I got a pursuit that will override my pain. I got a pursuit that will override my problem. Tell somebody say, I got a pursuit that will override every attack. I got something on the inside of me. The old saints said this. Something on the inside of me. It is working on the outside. Oh, oh what a change. I got to close, but find somebody as I close. They say, oh, neighbor. You want to know why I still got my mind? It's because I had a pursuit for God. I know I was great. I knew I had greatness on the inside of me. But I was never above a cry. I was never above a whole roaming on the floor. I can wear a nice $500 Donald Taylor made suit. But it ain't too cute for me to go after God. I'm getting ready to close. Y'all getting bored. Way down the road and say, I got a pursuit for God. Y'all acting like y'all Presbyterian tonight. As I get ready to close my mouth. Look at your neighbor and say, oh neighbor, I got a pursuit for God. My pursuit keeps me alive. As long as I was still going after God, I still got a chance. I know it didn't make sense, but it didn't make sense in a moment. Look at somebody one more time and say, oh neighbor, I got a pursuit for God. That's why I'm still alive tonight. John chapter 4. Jesus had just left Samaria where he encountered the woman at the well where he tells in verse 14 
clean. If you drink of this water, you shall never thirst again. But shall be a well of water. Spring it up into everlasting life. He also tells us in verse 23. But the hour, there it is. Cometh. And now is. With the true worshipers. Shall worship the Father. Yeah, yeah. In spirit and in truth. For the Father, y'all better help me. Seeking such to worship him. Verse 24 comes along. They say, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So now Jesus makes his journey out of Samaria into Galilee. I give it in the clothes. Thank you, Malcolm, for treating me like I'm family. For there's five things in the text tonight that the text wants to teach us. Yeah. The man was royal. He had servants that served him. Yes, he did. But the first thing the text wants us to know that his dilemma was personal. It was nobody else's problem but his own. He said, it's not my cousin, but it's my son who needs God. I know that I'm royal. But I need a king that's higher than me, that can touch my son. I gotta go, oh Lord. I gotta go, Malcolm. I got four more things to tell you. Yes, sickness had hit his house. His son was on his deathbed. His money, Lord, I praise you. And he had power over Couldn't work hoodoo Couldn't work the hoodoo magic To bring him back to life But he heard About Jesus Y'all don't like this kind of preaching do you I said he heard Heard About Jesus He heard about Jesus And how he made the blind to see He heard Raised Lazarus from the dead. He heard how he made the water wine. He said, I got to get to that man because he holds the answer to my situation. So, point number one oh God, his dilemma was personal. But number two, he was determined. In his pursuit, yes, he was. Number one was his dilemma was personal, but number two is he was determined in his pursuit. Verse number 47 says it like this when he heard that Jesus come out of Judea into I'm in the book in the Galilee, he went to him and was a him to come down to heal his son. He was a man of royalty, but he was desperate. He was determined to get to Jesus. And I'm looking at about 40 people who know what it is to be determined to get to Jesus. So number one is his dilemma was personal. Benjamin, you got me, son. His dilemma was personal. Number two was his determined in his pursuit. Number three is he was direct with his problem. Yes, he was. He came to Jesus and he didn't come to Jesus trying to flatter him. He didn't come to Jesus trying to make him feel good. He said, God, and I need you to touch my son. And some of y'all in here going to everybody else about Jesus, about your problem. But I heard an old song saying, have a little talk. I ain't got no old church. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell, 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 tell. 
And the enemy commits you doubt what God wants to do. He can rob you of your manifestation. We've been doing a lot of empty dancing with no expectation. No, don't leave me be. Come on. Come on, then. Come on. And so, prophetess, I'm going to just call you what I see in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Here it is. Stay where you are. I'm finished. There's a healing angel over on top of her. I don't know where she's crying. Right here. Healing is literally resting like a dove. I don't know what's going on in your body. But the father said, I got enough power to dry it up. Listen, I've already preached. It's time to work. What preachers do nowadays is preach, take your money, and don't work. But there's a power at the altar. I, I lost, I lost. 75% see when I was saying victory y'all was going crazy now tell somebody you I'm going to give you a mic every minute you won't say you'll give a mic tell somebody you said that's power at the altar now, I didn't embarrass you did I uh, that's my graphic design listen here, here, here here's what I have a problem with when other people get a word from God, we draw up because we're jealous because we want to go. Come on, Hank, say it. Here's where I get excited in the text. Benjamin, you can help me scream on this. I didn't deal with this until now because I wanted you guys to know what it is to be purified. The Bible says that the man from Capernaum goes home. The boy is raised. Hear this. And the whole house. The whole house. The whole house. Wait a minute, wait a minute. But the whole house didn't go to see Jesus. Come on, Hank, say it again. The whole house did not go to see Jesus. But guess who did? The head of the house did. And the anointing runs from the... We're in the same house tonight. And I told her that healing is resting on her. And we didn't praise God and give God the word. You know why? Because I didn't, I didn't give you the word. But here it is. When a word is in the atmosphere, if you have the faith, you can take that word and apply it to yourself. I've been saying this for years. If God is blessing your neighbor, he's in the neighborhood. Yeah. Pass it out your row and say, oh, my brother and my sister. Tell him, say, you want praise away because he's in the neighborhood. Father says he's going to six different people's houses tonight. We want to know why we don't get miracle signs and wonders is because well, number one, we're jealous, and number two, we don't respond when somebody else is getting it. But here it is, here it is. The way for those who are screaming, for the, the, the quickest way for you to get your manifestation is to praise God for somebody else's. The angel, Yevo, we have that kiss here. What is your name? Forever. What I feel the anointing. I feel the turn. I don't know how. 
out of your belly shall flow rivers. Somebody say rivers.
receive the manifestation of the Spirit of God. They're jealous now. I don't know what's going to happen in the, in the beginning of the month, or the middle of the month. They're jealous, and so they sent something on your daughter to try to make you doubt God. I remember you called me to the house. You told me to hold her and pray for her. You didn't trust everybody holding her. Y'all all right? Yes! Yes! Let him use says that the curse is broken tonight. They're trying to curse your seed because they're jealous of what God has called you to be. And they have missed their heyday. They missed their, they, they literally missed their time of what you're taking full advantage of in the spirit and in the natural. Yes. But she will not be a casualty of the attack of the enemy. I don't hear nobody in the dark. And the next one, the devil will try. But tell somebody it won't work. Y'all ain't loud enough in here. Put your hand toward him and say, it will not work. Here she was pregnant with Kaya. Last year when I was here, she was pregnant with her, sitting in the seat with the man with the purple seat. You remember that? And the power of God was so strong in here, it hit her, she got the dancing. You all right? It got the dancing. And then she got the dancing again this year with another one. Tell somebody to say, there's more coming to your hands. She ain't screaming because she know my face. But I want you to put I want you to put your hands to water and say, Kaya, Kaya, the attack on the on your life, the enemy put out against you. I want you to yell it, I curse it in Jesus' name. I want you to shout like this all over the door.
she's the one. The warfare was because of what's to come. I've been working here for a long time. But the warfare was because he's broken something out in you that doesn't run in your family. That's why you've always been the sort of Let's get ready to manifest. That's it. Whatever you see, Every time you say no, keep it because you sense enough enough in the spirit to know when it's God and when it's not. Tell your husband it'll come to pass within a month to two months out. When you say I sense, I see. No, you're sensing. You say I sense, but it's really you're seeing. I just want to make it plain to you. I don't know who this young girl is with the red hair, but the curse is broken over your life. Hey, and your family. There's a witch in your family. And I suffer not a witch to live. See, y'all draw it. Y'all draw see the new church, they draw up now. Because I got power. I lay hands on you. That's right. Come on. The spirit of depression sat on you real strong this year. And you had several thoughts of suicide. You said, I don't want to live. I don't have what they have. Father says, stop comparing yourself to your peers. The struggle is going to speak for itself. I speak to your self-esteem. You do not have to do what they do to find your identity. I'm getting ready Overseer, do you mind laying hands on her tonight? Can you give us some oil? Give her my oil. Denzel, come on. Can you put this in for Pastor's hand? Do you mind do you mind assisting her? I trust your hand and your oil. You will not go home the same as you came in through that door. I lost half the church. She will not. I want everybody. Now listen, before she lay hands on you, I want you to open up your spirit and receive because God is literally getting ready to choke slam the devil. And he's getting ready to let go. Oh, my shit, oh, my seer. Everything that his hand has been on in your life and in your family, God said it's broken right now. Come on, holler in this place as it's... Bye. 
Jesus. And two of you are not teenagers. Two of you are older. My God. My God. Denzel, where are you? There's six of you, four of you in your young years, and, and there's two of you who are older. Father said, if you be real with yourself tonight, you won't save women when you leave here. We don't want to be real with it because we're too embarrassed to be delivered from it. See, if the enemy can make you be embarrassed about deliverance, he can keep you bound. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If he can keep you embarrassed about deliverance, he'll keep you bound. But I want somebody in here to scream, I will never be bound. I'll never be bound. Another day in my life. I ain't gonna love you. Just know I'm looking straight because I don't want to look at you, but I just know I know who you are. Speak Holy Ghost. You can be set free tonight. I don't play with the day. I don't play with a woman. I don't play with a he is my worst enemy outside of my flesh. He's my worst enemy. But you know what? I'm going to let it alone because when you really, oh my God, I'm pretty sure. See, when you really want deliverance, you will come forth and don't care. Because you're tired of going through the same circles and the cycles for years and decades. Now listen, I lost my church. If it was dancing, it would be one accord. I need somebody to get into the spirit. I don't play with demons. I don't do it. See, I want to get back to the day, Bishop, where we don't come to church and just dance and scream and go out sweating. But somebody gets set free. Now, you can come forth or you don't want to come forth. I'm not going. It's about, yeah. Who am I talking to? All right, I have three. That's three more. Okay, Bishop, can we move the podium? Can you move this back, please, sir? Jesus. Now, I, now I felt some of y'all spirits draw up. talk about real deliverance. Now if you didn't come for this, something's wrong with you. You can leave. But if you really expect God to do something great in this atmosphere, I dare you to clap your hands and say the deliverance here. I sense there's not one more, there's two more. 
All it took was one to step out, the other one got the courage. Listen to me. Let me encourage you. Prophet, you come up here with me too, sir. Listen. You being touched at a young age don't have nothing to do with you. Somebody took advantage of you in your vulnerable state. So, there's two more. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. If you want to go back home with it, that's you. Yo, the heart is you. Come on. Yeah. 